Hi guys. I thought we would talk about rabies. Biologist uses rabies like virus to illuminate how SARS-CoV-2 blocks immune response. Vanderbilt University researcher Yi Ren is part of an international team that's confirmed the mechanism by which SARS-CoV-2, the scientific name for the strain of coronavirus causing COVID-19, targets and impacts its host for its host factor protein. The article SARS-CoV-2 uh, ORF6 hijacks the NUP98 to block STAT nuclear import and antagonize interferon signaling was published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences on October 23rd. Wren, an assistant professor of biochemistry, studies the basic mechanism by which proteins are expressed within cells and how different viruses target and hijack the function of critical immune factors within the cell's machinery. Her expertise is in influenza, the only influenza virus known to cause global flu disease epidemics and Vesicular st stomatitis virus, VSV, is a rabies-like virus that predominantly infects cattle, horses, and pigs. The virus is highly sensitive to interferons, the signaling proteins that are made up by host cells when they sense a virus. The interferon's purpose is to induce nearby cells to boost their antiviral defenses. Reviewing coronavirus-related research early in 2020, Wren came upon an article that suggested SARS-CoV-2 protein had similar characteristics to VSV, in that it acts to tamp down the interferons that would otherwise kick off an immune response in the host. From the literature review, I understood that I ha had the requisite specialist knowledge of how protein expression is blocked in VSV to meaningfully, meaningfully contribute to COVID-related research, Ren said. Together with longtime collaborators at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center and the uh, Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, I'll probably, I don't know if that's the correct way to say that, we were able to test the direct interaction between the host factor that I work with and the SARS-CoV-2 protein. We found that indeed they interact. The findings show that SARS-CoV-2 uses a similar strategy as VSV to target the same susceptible protein known as a host factor. The difference is that SARS-CoV-2 has a mechanism that stops proteins from sharing genetic information with the host cell nucleus. This blocking behavior enables suppression of the immune system. The mechanistic finding was a huge surprise for Wren, who spent so much time in the lab with VSV. Even though SARS-CoV-2 is an entirely new virus that the world is grappling with, it deploys a similar strategy to target the same host factor as VSV, making me feel somewhat familiar with the virus. So after many years of studying influenza A and VSV to see such a small difference on a cellular level resulting in what we've seen during this pandemic puts these small differences into perspective. The lab continues to work on the structural characterization of the virus host interaction so researchers can explore it further. Wren's team soon will be able to show how the virus protein targets the host machinery and its consequences on the atomic level, an essential step in designing therapeutics to enable appropriate immune response. We have a very strong community of structural biologists at Vanderbilt and amazing resources that we're all sharing, Wren said, as everyone is seeking to contribute to COVID basic research. My lab quick, quickly shifted our attention and are working hard to push our understanding of this virus forward. So, uh, So it, it, it prevents severe disease, uh, experimental COVID-19 vaccine. But what is this lab-made virus mimics COVID-19 virus? Airborne and potentially deadly, the virus that causes COVID-19 can only be studied safely under high-level biosecurity conditions. So this kind of re really makes them suggesting people to wear a cloth mask across their face ridiculous. 
scientists handling the infectious virus must wear bio, body biohazard suits and pressurized respirators and work inside laboratories with multiple containment levels and specialized ventilation systems. While necessary to protect laboratory workers, these safety precautions slow down efforts to find drugs and vaccines for COVID-19, since many scientists lack access to the required biosafety facilities. To remedy that, researchers at Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis have developed a hybrid virus that will enable more scientists to fight against the pandemic. The researchers genetically modified a mild virus by swapping one of its genes for one for SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19. The resulting hybrid virus infects cells and is recognized by antibodies just like SARS-CoV-2, but can be handled under ordinary ordinary laboratory safety conditions. This study is available online in cell host and microbe. I've never had so many had this many requests for scientific material in such a short period of time, said co-senior author Sean Whelan, PhD, the Marvin A. Uh, Benecki, distinguished professor and head of the Department of Molecular Microbiology. We've distributed the virus to researchers in Argentina, Brazil, Mexico, Canada, and of course all over the U.S. We have requests pending from the U.K. and Germany. Even before we published, people had heard that we were working on this and started requesting the material. To create a model of SARS-CoV-2 that would be safer to handle, Whelan and colleagues, including co-senior author Michael S. Diamond, MD, PhD, the Herbert S. Gasser, Professor of Medicine, and co-first authors Brett Case, PhD, a postdoctoral researcher in Diamonds Laboratory, and Paul W. Rothloff, a graduate student in Whelan's laboratory, started with vesic ves vesicular stomatitis virus, or VSV. The virus is a workhorse of, a vi of virology labs because it's fairly innocuous and easy to manip manipulate genetically. Primarily a virus of cattle, horses, and pigs, VSV occasionally infects people causing a mild flu-like illness that lasts three to five days. Viruses have proteins on their surfaces they use to latch on and infect cells. The researchers removed VSV's surface protein gene and replaced it with the one from SARS-CoV-2 known as Spike. The switch created a new virus that targets cells like SARS-CoV-2, but lacks the other genes needed to cause severe disease. They dubbed the hybrid virus VSV SARS-CoV-2. Using serum from COVID-19 survivors and purified antibodies, the researchers showed the hybrid virus was recognized by antibodies very much like the real SARS-CoV-2 virus that came from a COVID-19 patient. Antibodies or sera that prevented the hybrid virus from infecting cells also blocked the real SARS-CoV-2 virus from doing so. Antibodies or sera that failed to stop the hybrid virus also failed to deter the real SARS-CoV-2. In addition, a decoy molecule was equally effective at misdirecting both viruses and preventing them from infecting cells. Humans certainly develop antibodies against other SARS-CoV-2 proteins, but it's antibodies against the spike that seems to be mo most important for protection. So as long as the virus has the spike protein, it looks to the human immune system like SARS-CoV-2 for all intents and purposes. The hybrid virus could help scientists evaluate a range of antibody-based uh, preventives and treatments for COVID-19. The virus could be used to assess whether experimental vaccine elicits neutralizing antibodies to measure whether COVID-19 survivor carries enough neutralizing antibodies to donate plasma to COVID-19 patients or to identify antibodies with the potential to be developed into antiviral drugs. One of the problems in evaluating neutralizing antibodies in is that a lot of these tests require a BSL-3 facility and most clinical labs and companies don't have BSL-3 faculty, uh, faculties, said Diamond, who is a professor of molecular microbiology and of pathology and immunology. With this surrogate virus, you can take serum, plasma, or antibodies and do a high throughput analysis at BSL-2 levels, which every lab has without risk of getting infected. And we know that it correlates most 
perfectly with the data we get from the bona fide infectious SARS-CoV-2. Since the hybrid virus looks like SARS-CoV-2 to the immune system but does not cause severe disease, it's a potential vaccine candidate. Diamond added, he, Whelan, and colleagues are conducting animal studies to evaluate the possibility. Now, this came out in July. What is this VSV? It's a rabies-like virus. A well-known rabies lysovirus belongs to the same family. So, I, I'm going to see, let me see if I can come up with... Um, Let's see, Mel Rabies. Well, my computer's going to freeze on me now. Of course it will. Let's see if I can get it to see. There's like no search button for her. Uh, so, okay, hold on. Okay, uh, hang in there with me for a second. Uh, the fatal case of lysovirus encephalitis in the Russian Far East. Well, I, I know she has a, uh, a link specifically about rabies. It's a really old ink. Um, well, okay, lovely. All right, let me try this. Yep, there you go. Sorry, thanks for bearing with me. I, I, I know um, that's quite annoying. And now it's going to just go really, really slowly. <laughs> huh. But Mel's been trying to tell us about uh, rabies. Oral rabies retrovirus baiting program. And I believe, yeah, 2011 is when she posted this. And they were uh, putting this stuff all over Texas, many, many different places. Um, if malaria can carry it, can be Babesia or Borrelia, the Plasmodium. Parasite. Uh, let's see. If I can get the links to open. Let's see. Evolving faster than any other new rabies virus on records in northern Arizona rabies strain is mutated to become contagious among skunks and male foxes. Well, wow. human vaccinia infection after contact with the raccoon rabies vaccine bait. Measles IgG antibody index correlates with T2 lesion on MRI in patients with er multiple sclerosis.
if gene swapping lipids are the cause of all the syndromes to perpetuate the infections, there's no telling what all the kids have. They have used other organisms, proteins for years, enough to give everyone AIDS. Let's see if I can get this link to open. Molecular interactions of Alzheimer's protofilaments with lipid membranes. Lipids. Is that kind of like the lipid nanoparticles they're using as delivery system? Synthetic. So, uh, the new vaccines will cause us to tolerate the infections until something goes very viral like it did with in Mad Cow. And they now report the HIV virulence is increasing with T cell resistance. So it's antibodies game. Anybody's game. <laughs> I said antibody. Our results are consistent with increased virulence of HIV-1 over the course of the epidemic. Extrapolating over the 30 years since the first description of AIDS, this represents a CD4 T cells loss of approximately 148 cells and a gain, uh, a log, uh, 10 copies of viral RNA measured during early infection. These effect sizes would predict increasing rates of disease or progression and need for ART is the vir virulence of HIV changing. No, nope, they would like to insert parts of that HIV into uh, with the rabies virus. Uh, and we wonder why so many zombie movies are, are, are popular. The Walking Dead. It's like there's, uh, we're playing out a script uh, and they're, you know, telling us but, you know, for 11, uh, or what is it, uh, since 2011, Mel has been screaming at the top of her lungs <laughs> to try to get people to understand that we have been at war. How lethal is a rabies virus? More extensive studies are needed. Of course, they need to create a hybrid one in the lab so they can study it. Uh like kind of like Plum Island where they uh, were Plum Island Animal Disease Laboratory where we got Lyme, the bioweapon. Anyways, this link you can uh, you can find if you put in Mel's name and search uh, under oral rabies retrovirus program. I, I believe it's all public. Anyways, let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching.